Hey everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast where I quickly summarize the biggest information and network security stories each week and share some practical tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 30th, 2013. Lots of news in little time, so let's jump right in, starting with an update on the zero-day IE vulnerability that's spreading in the wild. If you follow our blog, you know about the Internet Explorer's zero-day vulnerability that attackers have been exploiting in the wild. Well, over the past week, it's gotten worse. More and more attackers have started leveraging this flaw both in attack campaigns and even building it into their exploit frameworks. More importantly, researchers have released a public exploit for the zero-day IE flaw for Metasploit. So now literally anyone can try the exploit out. This means it's very important that you take care of it. The good news is when I talked about the IE zero-day, Microsoft had already released a fix-it that mitigates this vulnerability. Next week during patch day, IE will release a full patch for this vulnerability as well as seven other security bulletins to fix problems in other products as well. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to get those patches on Monday. While we're talking about Microsoft patch day, don't forget that next week is also Adobe patch day and they plan on releasing at least an update for Reader. So if you use that popular PDF reading application, be sure to update it as well. And speaking of Adobe, that brings us to the second story this week. During the week, Adobe released a very important customer announcement saying that their network had been breached. Apparently, attackers were able to gain access to Adobe's network and steal a bunch of customer credentials, apparently 2.9 million customer records, which contained information like your name, email address, your hashed password, and they even said encrypted credit card numbers. So if attackers cracked that it could be a pretty significant issue. On top of that, Adobe even mentioned that some of their source code had been stolen. They think that uh, Cold Fusion, Flash, and a few other products had the source code stolen by these attackers. And this could be a problem for a number of reasons, one of which attackers might be able to do some uh, analysis of the source code and find new vulnerabilities. In any case, if you have a, a login on any of Adobe's sites, you should definitely go and change it. And you'll probably get an email from Adobe if you're one of the affected customers. Another big story this week was the takedown of the Silk Road website. If you haven't heard of the Silk Road, it is an underground uh, Onion website, a website that you can only access on the Tor network that is known for selling drugs and other illegal paraphernalia. Well, this week the authorities released the public complaint against the person that allegedly owns this site, who goes by the alias the Dread Pirate Roberts. So he has been caught, arrested, and is currently awaiting his, his court case. But what's more interesting about the story is how they found the Dread Pirate Roberts. He used the Tor anonymizing network, and it was apparently very good at hiding himself online. But a story came out talking about how an FBI agent was able to, uh, to find him. And essentially it comes down to user error, or bad OPSEC. OPSEC stands for Operation Security. Really, no anonymizing tool will fully protect you if you go ahead and freely uh, give up some of your private details. And apparently the Dread Pirate Roberts uh, accidentally logged into a few forums and shared email addresses he shouldn't have. And it really became the chink in his armor that eventually led the FBI to him. In any case, it's a fascinating story, so I'll be sure to post a link to it in the reference section of the blog post associated with this video. Go check it out. Next is a story that illustrates why it's very important to be careful who you trust. A popular VPN provider called ProxySH released a very interesting announcement this week. Uh, VPN providers essentially are services that allow you to VPN, create an encrypted virtual private network connection to them, and they then proxy you on the internet. They 
anonymize you. All your internet connections come through them. Well, this week, Proxy SH shared details where they admitted that they were actually sniffing clear text from one of their US based servers. According to them, there was some hacking activity happening that was coming from Proxy SH servers. So it's understandable that this VPN service would want hackers off their network. So to find the hackers, they went ahead and sniffed the clear text traffic from their server. Since they're kind of the man in the middle for this VPN connection, they have clear text access to all your traffic through them. Uh, the problem is when they do this, that means they see clear text of everyone using that particular US server. Now, while in this case, I actually don't hold it against Proxy SH for doing this, it is good that they find hackers using their system and, and get them off if it uh, if it goes against their, their license agreement. However, it just is a reminder that these services can actually access your data. So as you're sharing your data with, with cloud providers or any sort of service you send your data through, do realize that you're actually sharing trust with that particular provider. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. There's some cases where these providers are very secure and the services they offer you are great. But it does mean you should do your due diligence and, and study their security policies and how they handle data to make sure you pick providers that are going to try to keep your data safe. So the last story is the latest NSA and Snowden leaks. During the week, both The Guardian and Bruce Schneier released a number of stories talking about uh, the latest presentation that Snowden leaked from US authorities like the NSA. And this presentation talked about specifically how the NSA infiltrated or tried to infiltrate Tor networks. You probably know about a month or so ago, we found out that uh, someone in the government was exploiting vulnerabilities in the Tor browser that was bundled with Tor uh, to gain access to certain Firefox users and kind of de-anonymize them as they're on the Tor network. And they did this by redirecting people's traffic, their, their Tor web traffic, to a hijack server that exploited essentially a JavaScript vulnerability in Firefox. Anyways, the latest leak is a presentation that outlines this process. Process. To be honest, I don't think it uh, uncovers anything we didn't really know. We knew they were exploiting a vulnerability in the Firefox browser. We knew it relied on JavaScript. But it does talk about the infrastructure that the US government and NSA has built to create this man-in-the-middle attack for certain uh, uh, suspects or victims they want to gain access to if they want to actually hack your computer. And it's very, very interesting. Now, the good news is there really is no vulnerability in the Tor network. It's anonymized services are still good. It was hard for the NSA to crack them. The vulnerability was more in the actual software, in this case Firefox, that a, a Tor product used. So you can still use Tor if you like to help anonymize yourself. But you need to realize, just like the story about the, the Dread Pirate Roberts, that no anonymizing technology is going to, to help you if you don't actually follow other operational security practices. If you, if you share private data even while anonymized, or you use unpatched software, you're still vulnerable. In any case, it's a very interesting read. I'll post a link to it in the WatchGuard Security Center blog. On top of that, uh, Glenn Greenwald, the journalist that's been doing most of the Snowden and NSA leaks, also did a Reddit Ask Me Anything thread this week. And it's a very interesting thread where he answers a lot of public questions about this whole Snowden NSA incident. So I'll post a link to that as well and recommend you check it out. Well, that's all for this week. As always, there are a bunch of other stories, so be sure to check out the reference section of our blog post. And you should always check out WatchGuard Security Center because we post uh, vulnerability information and other interesting security stories there as well. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching and here at WatchGuard we're rooting for you.